the Pulse the Program series rolling right along to Norman, Oklahoma. Take a look at what's going on with the Sooners. Now, the Sooners are in a very interesting place. Very interesting place. I'm not talking about Norman, Oklahoma. I'm not talking about geographically them being an interesting place. Though Brent Venables did come on this show and went to bat for the great state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma as a team underachieved last year. No secret. The standard Oklahoma was way higher than what they got done last year. Went six and seven, you know, had five games they lost by one score, a couple of heartbreakers. Dylan Gabriel was dinged up at times. The defense was bad. Brett Venables was first year as a head coach. Exhale. Everybody is just exhaling now and understanding that there is a lot that happened last year that I think you can chalk up to growing pains. And you can chalk up to a coach having his first experience as a head coach. But the feel and the pulse at Oklahoma, the pulse of the program in Oklahoma, is just getting started. Because last year, we already talked about it. it. It wasn't ideal. It wasn't what you expected. It's not acceptable. But there can be two things that are true about Brent Venables in his first year at Oklahoma. The first is, last year was well below the standard. We already covered that. The second thing that can also be true is you didn't hire Brent Venables to win you a national title in 2022. He didn't do that. We're all on the same page there. Hiring Brent Venables was a sustainable long-term play for Oklahoma. Because when they brought him in, when they announced him as the head coach, there was a feeling across that fan base that, okay, we got our guy. Not a guy who's just going to be a good coach. Not a guy who's just going to win some football games here. We got a guy that fits what we are here at Oklahoma. Who's tough. Who's disciplined. Who's going to have a physical product on the field. Who's going to play defense. Who's going to be hard hat and lunch pail kind of mentality. That's what we want to get back to at Oklahoma. A lot of people, when Lincoln Riley left, that some of it was maybe, you know, fan bases feeling a little bit bitter that you're living for the school with palm trees and Hollywood and all that. But there was also, I think, a very legitimate part of this fan base that was very honest in saying, we appreciate what he did for us here at Oklahoma. But to be real, he didn't match up with what we are as a brand and as what we want our football team to look like. And Brent Venables is that for them. So going back to what the Pulse is, they are just getting started. You cannot judge a man by his first year on the job. He doesn't even have all his players in yet. And Brent Venables understands that he does not have the roster currently at the end of 2022 to compete for how they expect to compete in 2023. And if you don't believe me, trust his actions. He went to the portal and got 17 transfers, nine of them on the defensive side of the football. He understands, hey, I got to adapt here. We, we, we don't have a whole bunch of recruiting classes to get in here and eventually figure it out at Oklahoma. It's like, no, 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 no. The time is now. The time is now. Yes, we're just getting started but the internal feel with we're just getting started is you haven't even seen anything yet. You haven't even seen what we're going to be. Because last year was inexcusable. And I've said that probably like three or four times now throughout the segment. Nobody's okay with what happened last year. Nobody's signing up for that. Nobody's signing off on that. But with Brent Venables and the personnel he's now added, the defense is going to be, at the very least, they're going to be faster, going to be more talented, going to be more versatile, which is what is required of an Oklahoma defense under Brent Venables. And the offense with Dylan Gabriel, another year under Jeff Levy, if he can stay healthy, they have a chance to build on what they did last year and do some really exciting things. Because all that was said about them being 6-7, and seven, a lot of people forgot to mention the offense still scored over 30 points a game, and they were in every single game. You don't get points for being in every single game, but the fact that you went toe-to-toe with a team in Florida State that's going to be a top 10, top 5 team to start the year, I think deserves some kind of recognition for Oklahoma. So for Oklahoma... They feel like they're just getting started. You can make all the jokes you want about six and seven, make all the jokes about Brent Venables not really being the head coach for Oklahoma and him being in over his head. Like, that's fine. They hear all the chatter on the outside, but that fan base and the people in that building, they know what's, what, they're, uh, what they're capable of in 2023. They know they have the second best roster in the entire Big 12 conference. And they're looking at last year and saying last year is last year. We got a new team. We have a new approach. We have more stamina based on what we learned last year. Like, let's go. Let's bounce back. Winners respond. It's what Brent Menable said at Big 12 Media Days. Winners respond. So Oklahoma, the pulse of the program is they're just getting started. They love all the naysayers. They love all the doubt. And they cannot wait to make a statement in 2023. And I can't wait to watch it, to be real with y'all. It's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch what Oklahoma is. And they're last year in the Big 12. We didn't even really mention that. They're headed to the SEC next year. 
You don't think Brent Venables understands the sense of urgency they need to be better in the Big in the Big 12 this upcoming season to be better and ready for the SEC? He knows that. He knows all that. So they're going to let him talk, and Oklahoma is going to get ready to handle business. So it'll be a lot of fun to watch. One of the best storylines in college football. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.